what Joanne did was she stole that off of Carissa Moore in that final. Uh, but Carissa wants one back, I'm telling you right now, Chris. And here we go, France v. Hawaii. Both surfers, regular footers. Both surfers have dropped many, many excellent scores in 2022 on the championship tour. You would have to say these are two friendly rivals. Uh, they will not give each other any space as Carissa Moore gets the first wave up and out, handing priority over to Joanne Dafe, who's out the back looking at a beast of a wave. Don't rush it. She's identified a good wave, Chris. She's going left. Joanne Dafe. Oh. All right, now Over we're now. even. Now we now are we're even. even. <laughs> it's, it's, it's let's just call it a restart. 33-23 on the clock. Both scores come through under one. And I saw the hunger from Joanne DeFay because she was really disappointed on that third place finish in El Salvador. And she's done one better here in Brazil. Carissa Moore. Carissa Moore. Representing Hawaii well with that opening snap. Gets onto the open face there. Working her way down the line. That's kind of just uh, uh, another brick in the wall. You know, uh, a mid-range score most likely. Just her way to kind of potentially work through the nerves. It'd be difficult coaching one of the best surfers that's ever ridden a surfboard. What do you tell Carissa? And he said, look, it's about self-belief. Carissa, who's obviously one of the goats of our sport, has a tendency not to believe in herself, not to really realize how good she is. So what his messaging to her was, Look, believe in yourself. You can beat anyone. You're the best surfer in the world. Go out there and do what you do. Yeah, I mean, she's five-time world champ, Olympic gold medalist, but uh, she does get affected by her losses, and she was quite vocal about that on social media after she lost to Caroline Marks in El Salvador, just saying, you know, I'm always... I've, she's been around the block plenty of times, but she's always learning. She's always trying to, you know, learn from those losses and try to take them better and not be so hard on herself and she's so critical of herself and uh, I mean that's what it takes to get to the top. Joanne Defe now looking for the answer back that's not going to be it just the uh, it looked like the right wave but uh, sometimes Mr. Right turns into Mr. Wrong quick so that wave not cooperating with Joanne Defe she'll get right back out there battle who will get priority after these last two waves ridden seems like they're probably even shifting a bit further down the beach. There's some long left-handers coming through and sort of cancelling out those rights right now. High tide coefficient right now. Three, uh, three feet of water moving. Here's Joanne, Chris. Quick snap there to start. Working things through to the inside section. Hoping for something to give mm. her a nice impactful finish. That wave dissipates underneath her feet. A little work done out the back. She does need a 3 five, one but her opening wave was just a 2.5, so she does have a 5.5, but nothing uh, nothing wild on the scoreline just yet. Yeah, I love this surfing from Joanne DeFay, but uh, just the, the one turn, I, I was just thinking, I, I really believe that whatever girl finds the set that's got a closeout section and can bang two or three turns is is going to get the win here. But, uh, you know, Joanne wanting to get on the board, but these, these waves obviously have these uh, shoulders that go small, and that's just keeping the score probably in that mid-range. Beautiful surfing from Joanne, though. She's just, she's got that magic board under her feet that she's been riding all year. Her sharp eyes, she's not letting anyone near it. Write this down. Take note. September 8th, the Rip Curl WSL Finals is coming to San Clemente, California. Will Carissa Moore be triumphant? Well, with turns like that, it's looking awfully good. Uh -huh. But then an unforced error throws Carissa Moore off her board. She was on her way to what was looking like an excellent score. Uh -huh. Cut that score in half with the final fall at the end. Let's have a look at it here, unpack this. Took off in such a good spot behind the peak, came around the bottom and a huge turn there, but just had that little bubble and it put her off for that second turn there. Couldn't get the weight over the front foot and unfortunately goes down, but loved this turn. Let's see where she unfortunately bubbled, kind of dropped out of the sky there and just fell on her back heels. Went up to the, that lip line. She recovered well. Right behind her, Joanne Defe looking to capitalize on a mistake from Carissa Moore. Two big turns out the back, looking for a strong finish. Another, this wave is the gift that keeps on giving, and Joanne Defe keeps on taking, and right there, she is going to extend her lead with some incredible surf. She was able to really string it together seamlessly 
with a series of maneuvers down the line, negotiating even some of the warbles. But really, what I, my takeaway is tempo on this wave and pace. Yeah, no, she got so many turns. We actually didn't see those first two turns on the original, uh, you know, in the original replay. But uh, just the way she finished that as well, what, we haven't seen one of those long waves that actually had a section stand up at the end. Nothing dynamic at the start, so I'm not sure where the score will go. But the fact that she got five turns in here and finished with that one there, boom, and timed that last turn perfectly. I think the judge is going to absolutely love that, throwing so much spray. And yeah, just a beautiful wave. It was like turning the radio dial. She went from the classic rock station to the punk rock station, <laughs> all in the span of one wave. Well, flow is in the criteria. And when I look at the pace on this wave, I think this is really an example of good flow down the line and placing those turns in the appropriate spot with the, the appropriate tempo. And of course, Chris, we've been talking about it, a nice finish. Yeah, she turned things up. You know, I feel like uh, you could see kind of her emotion level on that wave start off and go okay just do what you need to do and then as things started to progress down the line she's going yeah feeling this boom yeah. boom boom out go the lights joanne de and we've also seen that feel like a big target on your back we'll see how carissa wears it on this wave streaking down the line looking for a time to strike one setup move then she goes vertical uncharacteristically Digging the nose, going head over heels, a rare unforced error for Carissa Moore. Yeah, wow, two falls in this final, which is going to hopefully not play on her mind too hard, but it's hard to turn around. I mean, this was her chance here to get back into this heat, and that was a huge turn. Unfortunately, the backwash just hit her, and she poked the nose. That was such a hard section to hold on to, but uh, I thought she had it. You don't have to move around. Here we go with Carissa. Carissa Moore now. Smaller wave but she was on her second priority. Good finish right there. That was, that, was, that was good. It wasn't great, but it was good, and it might be enough to help build some momentum for Carissa Moore. Things that make you say, hmm, right? Carissa Moore, as we've seen in the past, is so good at surfing, she doesn't generally have to rely on tactics. She's almost apologetic when she destroys her competition, which is, uh, you know, it it's just makes her that much more of a special athlete. This wave right here, I feel like this was yet another kind of building block. She has six minutes to go, and this is where I think both these surfers really need to start going above their comfort zone on the waves that they have. Look at Joanne on the offensive. All right, here we go. Move. Striking back, Joanne DeFay, currently in the lead. Her high mark is 7.5. Might have a chance for a finish there, nice and clean on the ride out. So again, did just enough right there. Nothing super flashy, but keeping the pedal to the metal. Here we go with Joanne DeFay playing offense, Laura. Yeah, this was good. I mean, yeah, like you were saying, Chris, nothing flashy, but uh, she's way down the beach and she gets two nice turns here and she gets the completion. I would dare say that this is going to, you know, better her 4-5, not by, I don't think, a lot, but it's going to push, push up Carissa's requirement with four minutes to go. So I think a really smart offensive move. This is what Joanne does. She's a little mathematician. She's doing the numbers, knowing that if she can just make Carissa's job a little harder, she's doing her job. So, uh, yeah, I think a pretty smart move here. And look, a beautiful way of a strong first turn. Nothing uh, too in the pocket or too dynamic. But, yeah, it came in as a 4.83. So, you know, just pushing that requirement up to a 6.41 for Carissa Moore. And even though there's a lot of tension in the lineup and we know what's on the, you know, what the ramifications are for this heat. Here goes Joanne the face surfing under Chris's priority. Quick snap there. Ooh, this wave could have something to offer through the inside. It doesn't. It just dissolves into the Sakurama sand. John DeFay makes her way back out into the lineup with two and a half minutes to go. Looks like there's some lumps coming. Let's see if this can turn into anything for Carissa Moore. One last chance. Looks like she's taking a paddle. Carissa Moore looking for a 6-4-1. Has something to work with here. Big opening snap. And another wow. hangs wow. on Carissa wow. Moore. A <laughs> rare claim from our wow. She feels like she may have done enough. She needed a six there or you go. one. Did you say buzzer beater? There like you go. We're talking about the buzzer beating, containing herself, Carissa Moore. I say she got the job done, Chris. I say so. Let's take a look back at one of the highest single wave scores of the entire event, a 9.5.
at the exact moment she needed it. Leave it to Carissa Moore to do exactly what she needs to do. Yeah, yeah. a lot. You just the surfing, the power, the extension through the turns. And this is live. This happened before the buzzer. That, that look at Carissa Moore's score. She's lost control. Joanne DeFay, the buzzer beater, takes oh her God. down, and the emotions <laughs> running hot for Carissa Moore. She will stay in the yellow jersey. She will remain your world number one, a buzzer beater to get the victory here in Brazil. 9.5. Wow, Carissa, that uh, just I've got I've got shivers. That's. That's an incredible win. This is an important victory for Carissa Moore in a year that she's had that yellow leader's jersey but has not taken a victory yet on the CT in 2022. Now she has done it. I feel this is a momentum change for Carissa Moore, and this is bright lights when we look all the way to the Rip Curl WSL Finals. This is a big moment for Carissa.